and to what work a ship. out there. Oh, and what a ship. Things went just as the brochures promised. Great food, amazing service, and as an added treat for the history buffs on board, the old ship made an adjustment to her course that took her directly over the resting place of the best known shipwreck of all time. Elizabeth II first entered service in 1969, she sailed nearly six million miles, more than any other ship and the equivalent of going to the moon and back 13 times. In the process, QE2 has carried more than two million guests. I brought this one out from the very beginning, in the, like being at the, end of the birth and now I'm taking it to the, uh, to the end. James Murray joined the Cunard Line in 1968 and originally served on the famous Queen Mary before joining QE2 at the shipyard where she was built. These days, Murray is the maitre d' in the Princess Grill dining room. Murray's preparing for dinner during QE2's second-to-last eastbound crossing from New York to Southampton, England. Of course it's very sad, but the unfortunate thing is that these things happen. It happens in the family. People get old and it's the time to, uh, to pass on. Beloved by millions, the grand old ship will leave service in November to become a floating hotel in Dubai. A final port of call, Captain David Perkins says is not bad at all. I like to think that this is a great way for the, the ship to end up, is to go to Dubai and be jewel in the crown on the Palm Island. I think that is such a good fitting uh, for the ship to do. She's made more than 800 crossings, and in true traditional style, a transatlantic voyage on QE2 is unlike other cruises in that it's more formal. A dress code requires passengers to dress in evening attire after six. And on this voyage, it was too cold to sunbathe. Instead, there were activities like shuffleboard and the traditional game of coits. Also on deck, a unique and special activity hundreds took part in. I knew that the anniversary for the Titanic sinking was on the 14th of April. Captain Perkins says a rare coincidence occurred three days out of New York. Weather and course conditions were perfect for a visit to the final resting place of the RMS Titanic. So I decided, purely by myself, and probably get told off for it now, that we should go right over the position. And luckily enough, it was during the day. QE2's officers held a moment of silence and laid a wreath in honor of the victims of the disaster. Nobody seemed to appreciate it, except for the driving rain. It was a tragedy, but seafarers like myself benefited from that tra tra tragedy. Retired QE2 Captain, Cunard Line Commodore and now passenger Ronald Warwick says the International Ice Patrol and lifeboats and life jackets for all were direct results of the sinking. So it made life at sea much safer for crew and also for, for the passengers the ships carried. She has been probably the most successful ship in history. With the clock ticking on QE2, crew members like hotel manager John Duffy say they're holding off on making career plans while there's still much work to be done. I've still got seven or eight months to make sure this ship stays on top line, so I, I'll think about that when... I mean, it all went into this, all the knowledge and... This ship is an icon in itself. In 30 years' time, the Queen Mary II will be an icon. Captain Perkins loves the QE2, but he says he's also excited about taking command of Queen Mary II, the Cunard flagship that entered transatlantic service in 2004. Back in the Princess Grill, James Murray says he'll also miss his beloved home away from home for the last four decades, but he's already looking for his next assignment. Some pastors say, what are you going to do? Are you going to retire? And I say, why would I want to retire? And then I'm going to have to pay to go on a cruise. I can stay here and do it for nothing. Now, in addition to the two queens that were mentioned in the story, the Cunard Line also operates the Queen Victoria. They're also building a new Queen Elizabeth. Now, I probably should also mention that some of the video we just saw was provided by the Cunard Line, so theirs were the really good shots, and mine were the, well, the, <laughs> the kind of unsteady shots. No, not bad. Well, thank you. Also, <laughs> uh, for the ship buffs out there, we're going to go ahead and put the complete interview with uh, Commodore Warwick on the Internet on our website, camph.com, if you want to go ahead and uh, check that out. Wonderful. What an assignment. It sure was. It was, Thanks, it was a great way to spend my vacation. Did it Thanks, have kind man. of a feeling of, you know, 
the olden days when you know everybody dressed up and you know like you, you mentioned the formal dressing for dinner seating and uh, cruises now they're not right really they're more much like informal that. well this one we saw that they had the dress code on there and of course at, after six you have to go down and change because you're not supposed to be up on deck unless you're dressed the thing about the qe2 is that it was built you know, back in in the 60s when you're on the ship no matter where you are you know you're on a ship there's the sea spray and the creaking and the wood it, it was a lot of fun great thank you excellent well when the final cruise from southampton to dubai was announced by canard the voyage sold out in 36 minutes and for more on our special assignments you can go to our website kmph.com just click on the special assignment icon. You'll find it located on the left-hand side of that page.